Hi folks, this is a Wolf convection microwave oven. It's built in, sub-zero type, um, and it uh, works quite well. However, we noticed that over time, uh, and it's becoming more frequently, that we activate some function like microwave or convection oven. It looks as if it's working and doing everything, but it's actually not heating up the food. And so I narrowed down the problem after opening it up and checking everything inside to something to do with the door switch mechanism because something is not allowing all the switches to be in the proper position and then it goes into some safety override where it cuts the energy off from either the magnetron when it's using microwave or the coil that's on this side of the microwave for the convection oven, the heating element. So not knowing exactly what was going on with the thing, I wired in two, two lights, indicator lights, that I'll show you in a minute that are under here. You can kind of see it there. Uh, there's a green and a red light that I put into the actual circuit in order to tell us if it's actually heating up the food. Because we put in something in the microwave for like five minutes, and then five minutes later, after wasting time and the thing looking like it's working, it wasn't actually doing anything. So let's, let me show you an example of this. I'm gonna put in a microwave here, let's say 20 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds, we open up the microwave, put something in, that's the information on it. It's an MWC24, January 2007, so it's old, but it still works great. We put it in, close the door, and then hit start, and nothing would work. See, it looks as if it's functioning. You can hear the fan noise in there, and everything seems to be working, but it's doing nothing. Now down here, there are two lights. When I touch this lightly, you see, the green light goes on because I actually found something with the door mechanism doesn't allow it to work. Here, we'll do it again. Let's say 50 seconds, microwave, hit start. See, not working, so we'd stop it. Close the door again. Ah, see, now it works without touching that thing. So something is jiggling the mechanism inside and getting those switches to all line up. And then this, at least we know it works. That's why I put that light in there, wired directly into the magnetron uh, circuit so I would know that it's functioning. Now the same thing happened with convection because it's all connected to the safety here. Let's do convection here. Convection, temperature, that. Then it's asking for time uh, here, 15, sure, okay, start. See, now the red light's on because I have that on the coil. But here I stopped it, I'm gonna close it again and start. See, not working. But look, when I touch this, it works. See, when I lightly press the door button, now I know the coil is activated. So this was driving us crazy because it would work sometimes, it works other, not other times. I open the door, sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't work. It really depended on how you slam the door shut. And then I realized that if I lightly touch this, sometimes even if it's not working, when I don't have to stop it and open the door, close the door again, I just have to lightly depress this and then I would see that my coil or magnetron were energized. So I knew something flaky with this. This mechanism basically lifts up something here and allows the door to open, right? So in here you have switches right in there. There's two of them, interlock and uh, some kind of safety switch. You can see the contact right there. Down here, same thing. And when you press this button right here, it lifts See that it lifts this up it essentially lifts these guys up here and then it disengages the door okay goes in here and when you press lifts and it disengages so I'm gonna fix this but I just wanted to show you how we managed to at least get this thing working for now and uh, what was needed was just to wire in a couple of lights, indicator lights that function on uh, 250 volt AC. They don't draw any power, they're just there to 
essentially in they get attached um, in this in the circuit in parallel and they just show the voltage across the two contacts so by putting it across the contacts I can tell that at least there's some kind of voltage going across so you know it goes to the, the it goes to basically the active um, powers uh, lead to ground on both of those and uh, I don't still don't believe the sensors themselves are faulty not the sensors the uh, switches are faulty I have a feeling that something with this mechanism is disrupting the way that the door is pressing on all of the switches at the same time because what happens is when you close the door this part here pushes against one switch and this part here pushes against the bottom switch because there's two here and on the bottom uh, hinge there not hinge uh, this insert the same thing happens this side pushes one and the other one pushes down there are three uh, switches that are normally I believe open and one that's normal closed or maybe it's the other way around but essentially if you're gonna change the switches three are of one type and one is of another so you have to buy either switches that work in both modes or figure out which ones you have in your microwave um, but now I'm convinced that it's not even the switches I think it's a mechanical error and the way that this is set up uh, is interfering somehow with all of these contacts being pressed at the same time so there you have it hope you enjoyed this video and if you have a wolf microwave that's doing the same kind of thing uh, please let me know in your comments and uh, hopefully you can fix it without having to shell out another uh, you know over thousand dollars for one of these microwaves that otherwise works fine and really can be fixed probably for a few pennies um, given that it's probably some plastic wear that can be uh, if you can find the cause you could probably just patch it up with something and it'll work fine thanks again for watching hope you enjoyed this video and Give it a thumbs up. Bye for now.